Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm your host, Carla Salinas. Welcome to another fun weekend of Take 5. So let's get started. If you're a book lover, you're going to want to check this iconic bookstore out in Brownsville. Plus, OrthoCare is here to tell us the importance of orthopedic care. But first, waffles and ice cream, how fun. Take a look at this new hot spot our reporter Trista Castillo visited. Carla, you've probably heard of chicken and waffles, but what about waffles and ice cream? I'm here at the Dalai Lama in McAllen where I learned how to become a waffle master. Waffles, ice cream, and llamas? Oh my! McAllen is now home to the Dalai Lama, making it the second location in Texas and the biggest yet. It all started when co-owners Deborah Rios and Ana Gomez took a trip to California, tasted what the Dalai Lama had to offer, and knew the RGV would love it. I know that, that the valley is growing, especially the McAllen Edinburgh area is growing, but we wanted another fun environment where people can come and hang out and, you know, have some great waffles and ice cream with, um, with their families. This Los Angeles-based waffle shop is known for its quirky decor and its unique take on a classic waffle. What they're most known for is their bubble waffle. So the bubble is your, it looks like bubble wrap. There's bubbles all over. We put it into a cone shape. It's a little nice and soft, crispy around the edges. The Dolly's Dream is by far most popular um, in the bubble. And then if that's not, one of our signatures is not something that you like, then you could always build your own. You'd pick your waffle. We have 16 different varieties of ice cream. And then we have sauces and toppings that you could choose from as well. So I decided to put my dessert making skills to the test and tried creating one of their signature waffles. All right, let's close it up. It's a little heavy guys. Yes. <laughs> okay, now I we flip it. Yes. Okay. After making our waffle, we went in with the signature blue ice cream. Okay, am I doing okay? That's beautiful. Topped it off with some Nutella sauce, some strawberries, a little brownie bits, whipped cream, and powder, and voila, it was a Dolly's dream. So now we're gonna do a taste test. Let's all dig in. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so good. The brownie, the ice cream. I need a little, I need to take a little taste of this waffle. Oh my gosh. You like it? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You definitely need to try this. Dalai Lama in McAllen, Texas. We'll see you here. For take five, I am Trista Castillo. And great news, if you download the Dalai Lama app, you get $5 off your first purchase. So get out there and enjoy those delicious waffles. Independent Bookstore's mission is to build long-term relationships with customers that allow them to provide an authentic, personalized service. And that's exactly what this bookstore is doing. Photojournalist Rick Velasquez and I took a trip to Bujo Bookstore in Brownsville. Okay, Gilbert, well, thanks so much for joining us. We're here at Buell in Brownsville, Texas. For our viewers that don't know, tell us a little bit about Buell. Buell is Brownsville's upcoming bookstore. Um, this has been a dream in the making for many, many years for the readers of Brownsville, especially considering that we have not had a bookstore here for over a decade. We mostly deal in secondhand books with a few new books. The best way to reintroduce a bookstore to Brownsville would be to have something for everyone. There are well over 40 genres in the store. And how did you come up with the idea? <laughs> well, the idea came to me where all great ideas come from, in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but it came to me in the form of a question. I was wondering if Brownsville was the largest city in America without one. Oh, the answer is yes and no, but in short, Brownsville, before Buo, was the largest metropolitan area whose largest city did not have a bookstore. 
until now. I was actually a pop-up store that would go around town wherever they would let me do it. I only used two library cards, one table, and 500 pounds of books in the back of my pickup truck driving, yeah, wherever they would let me do it. <laughs> I feel that we each have a responsibility to add value in some way to the best of our ability to our home. Considering that this is something that's been a, a dream for many people to have the experience of a bookstore again, I wanted to make it happen for the readers of Brownsville. Gilbert, you and I were talking before and I feel like, you know, reading's kind of a lost art in a mm -hmm. way, you know, not a lot of people read very much anymore. What would you say to someone that's kind of lost habit of reading. That the books are more than happy to welcome you back. There is something written for everyone. There's there's many, many genres, many, many books, many, many styles. There's always there will always be that one author that will resonate and click with you in a way that will make you think, wow, this person is speaking to me. The idea is how to find them. Well, I actually got you something. You did? I did. Oh. So this is for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Open oh. it. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Zip, zip. Open it. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel by Jeffrey Archer. So this is actually my favorite book in the it, entire world. It, wow. This is my favorite book. My, you know, my gift to you. Aye. And hopefully, you oh, know. Thank you. Thank hopefully you. Hopefully with this, you can then gift it onwards. Yeah. So. Oh, I love the idea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so maybe, you know, after you're done reading with it, maybe our viewers can find it here at your grand opening? Sure, sure, we'll, we'll make it happen. Okay, so where can our viewers find you, Gilbert? Okay, we are here on 1140 East Washington Street, Brownsville, Texas. And to get news, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at BuoBTX, B-U-H-O-B-T-X. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Gilbert. I'm really looking forward to it. Encouraging literacy at a young age helps our children advance in their communication skills. This is why speech language pathologist Shelby Tarrant has started to collect books for elementary students to promote literacy and language skills. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shelby. Yes, thank you so much for having me here. I am so excited for this opportunity. I know. Thanks so much for coming. So tell us about More Than Books. Yes, so I started More Than Words Book Project because I'm a speech language pathologist intern. It's my first year working with these kiddos and I have started to notice along the way that Kindles and iPads are kind of the new thing now. No one really has that print awareness and the phonological awareness that's needed and it promotes Communicate, better communication skills, language, when you're holding that book, you know, when you open a book and you have that smell of the book, the brand new book feel. And I really wanted to encourage my students to start reading something that they can hold and take with them that's not technology. And a lot of them don't have, you know, a printed copy book. They tell me that they have something on their iPad, but you know, the, if they're traveling, I want them to have, if they're going to South Padre Island, I want them to take a book with them and it is needed. I know my campus right now, it's such a new campus, so we don't have a library on campus. And if I can give my student one book that they get to choose, I mean, that makes a world of a difference for this student. A lot of students now have this pressure at such a young age to excel in these tests that they're given. And I want them to know that you can go home and read and it's not a test. It's not supposed to be a challenge. It's supposed to be fun. Well, Shelby, your passion is coming through. If somebody wants to help, how do they do that? Yes, I have had so much support thus far, and I'm so thankful for all of the supporters of the More Than Words Book Project. I have an Instagram, morethanwords.bookproject, that you can go ahead and follow, or you can stop by some of the local businesses that have been helping out. There's so many, just to name a few. Uh, Quiet Mind Yoga, Yoga House RGV, F45, Viva, Candle Bar. I mean, those are just to name a few. Um, Hector's Health Company. Ah, there's just so many and I'm so, so thankful. You can stop by any of those local businesses and I'm um, hoping there's more to come. You can go ahead and just share by word of mouth, you know, to let people know about this project. That would be as much support as I can ask for. 
Awesome. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you so much for empowering the Valley. Such Thank a great you. organization, a great thing that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes, of course. When Take 5 returns, we're showing you how this business is putting celebration in yards. Plus, health should be our number one priority, and we're talking about the importance of orthopedic care when Take 5 returns. What better way to celebrate than with signs? Our reporter Trista Castillo visited Sign Gypsies RGB in Mission, and they had a surprise for us. Check it out. If you're looking for a creative way to celebrate any occasion, sometimes all you need is a sign. Ever driven down your neighborhood and wondered how people get those big signs on their yard for their birthday, graduation, or maybe something for a little appreciation? Odds are they came from the sign gypsies. We make a joke that, you know, before you knew where the party was at because you would see balloons in the mailbox. Now you know where the party's at because you have a sign in the front yard. Business partners and cousins Rebecca and Vivi Quintero have been putting smiles on people's faces since the end of 2019. Rebecca tells us her yard sign business took off during the COVID lockdown and has continued to gain traction ever since then. It's a joy to be able to do it, to be able to see people's reactions and to hear customers come back to us, tell us about it, and then come back and see us within a year or, or the next child's birthday or you know something that they're celebrating. So I think that's the joy and we also make those connections with people um, that we normally would not have met just because, you know, but we, we get to meet them, we get to know them um, because they are repeat customers. And so you, you started to become more personalized with them in that sense. How it works is you order the sign from the Sign Gypsies website, pick the sign you want and the date, and they'll set it up for you. Rebecca says these signs are unique and customizable. And we have so, so many different options. And so, yes, we'd be able to customize it to your liking. So you can say all signs pointed to us getting our own yard sign. We got Rebecca to come over to KRGV to help us with our first ever five one day celebration. It's a world full of bicycles and Channel 5 News anchor Trey Serna is here to talk to us all about it on this week's Made in the 956 Extra when Take 5 returns. The following segment is supported by Prime Health. OrthoCare is a premier clinic in the RGV offering orthopedic care, sports medicine, and so much more. Joining us today is orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Stephanie Baker, and family nurse practitioner at OrthoCare, Belinda Gonzalez. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having us. us. So Dr. Baker, tell us a little bit about OrthoCare. So OrthoCare is a practice that focuses mostly on patients um, who are aging. We see some younger patients as well, but the patients that we see frequently have chronic knee pain or chronic hip pain. Um, we also see quite a few patients with shoulder pain, and we discuss the different causes of those pains and uh, different ways of treating them, not necessarily surgical. Awesome. And Belinda, you were telling us that, you know, sometimes you see a lot of the older population as well. Uh, we definitely treat um, majority of our um, patients uh, for conservative uh, arthritis basically. Um, it, uh, the treatment can go from uh, non-surgical to surgical. We prefer to stick to non-surgical until the time comes where we move on to, to either joint replacement or other restorative um, care. And could you list some of those common injuries that you uh, kind of diagnose and treat there at OrthoCare? Um, a lot of times we, we are treating more of the chronic issues that are uh, more like an osteoarthritis type problem. Um, we do see some acute injuries as well, like ankle fractures or wrist fractures, shoulder injuries. I think we've seen some clavicle fractures recently as well. Um, a lot of the, the injuries that people will have be able to be splinted in an emergency room and then come in for follow-up. And how do you diagnose those injuries most of the time? 
Most of the time we'll discuss with the patient and get a history that'll help us some. Uh, the physical exam definitely gives you key points with swelling and uh, bruising and then the x-rays are kind of our mainstay as far as being able to look at the bones. For some of the more soft tissue related injuries like the rotator cuff or the meniscus in the knee, we need an MRI. Mm -hmm. Is there some non-invasive ways to treat some of these injuries? So, uh, good question. So mostly our fractures, if we can uh, treat them uh, conservatively, that would be with splinting and casting, and then follow up with x-rays to make sure that this is uh, healing appropriately. Um, there has been, you know, there are cases where um, the fracture can't be cared for um, conservatively, and Dr. Baker would end up having to take them for a reduction in the operating room. So. And Dr. Baker, do people need an appointment to go to ortho care? They do, they do. We are not a walk-in clinic and we do require appointments. Some insurers also require that you get a referral from your primary care physician, depending on what your insurance is. Okay, Belinda, and where can people go to for more information? Uh, most people can reach out to our Harnja Medical website and that will lead directly to our uh, contact information or they can reach out to OrthoCare um, at the clinic directly. Well, thank you ladies both so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having us. It's time for another Made in the 956 Extra, and I'm here with Channel 5 News morning anchor, Trey Serna. Thank you so much for joining us, Trey. Thank you for having me. So, Trey, I heard you actually went to Bicycle World this weekend? Yes, that's right. So, Henry P. Roberts and his wife, Kelly, opened up their Harlingen location nearly 45 years ago. Now, Henry has since passed, but his son, Tracy, is taking over and says he's working to keep his father's legacy alive. Now, they were so heavily involved in the community, and there was even a bike trail in Harlingen named after Tracy's dad. But here's the real Made in the 956 extra. So over the years, they've given back to the community a lot. And during the height of the pandemic, the community paid it back. Tracy tells me that their business actually went up and it actually makes more sense because more people were spending time outside. So people were naturally spending more time outdoors, you know, and just doing activities outdoors. But it really stood out to me because I've done a lot of these kind of stories over the past year. And every time I talk to a business, they always tell me how much they struggled during the pandemic. And this was the first business that told me that they're actually doing really well during the pandemic. So it was just kind of a, a, an, inter an interesting perspective from, from their point of view. Yeah, and that is really interesting because I remember the pandemic yeah. happening in real time. And even I wanted a bike. Yeah. And yeah. bikes were sold out everywhere. Yeah, it we're was all, ridiculous. We're all trying to find something to do outside, you know, Sk skateboard, roller skate, all, just all, all sorts of things. So it was really nice that they got to see the community come out and help support them. You know, they've been giving so much to the community for so many years. Funny story, I even got a doggy backpack and I put my dog on my back oh, that's so cute. and I started riding I my didn't, bike. I want to get one for my dog. I need, I need to get one for, uh, for my Cooper. He's a little pug, so he'd be a good one to do that yes. with. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Trey. Thank you for having me. Coming up, an event where you can sample different restaurants in McAllen. Sign me up. We'll tell you all about it when Take 5 returns. Follow us on social media at take5.krgb. Taste McAllen is back and here to tell us all about it is Jorge Sanchez with the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. Jorge, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me, Carla. So Jorge, what can our viewers expect this year from A Taste of McAllen? Well, Taste McAllen is the premier food event of our region, of South Texas actually. Our goal there is to showcase the, the food product and the culinary diversity that we have locally. So yeah, everyone is invited to attend May 3rd. I'm so excited. So what type of food can our viewers expect to taste? Every type of food. So we have the, the cuisine, the delicacy from House Wine Bistro, Salome, Mula, and Mori. But also we have our local restaurants that we all love, like the Copalenque, Casa Palenque. So um, it's, it's a wide range of different plates. So you guys have been doing this for a while now, mm -hmm. but you know, what does it mean to you now this year, you know, you're taking on those reins, you're planning this event out. I know so much work goes into it. How are you feeling? Oh, we're super excited. We are adding some different elements like aerial dancers, fire oh. dancers, live music. So um, I think it's gonna be a great show for everyone attending our, our general admission. It's just $75 with unlimited sampling from all the, the restaurants. We have over 23 different restaurants that will be there showcasing their products. Um, also, we have a VIP um, section where we will have Chef Larry Delgado. 
He is uh, a renowned connoisseur in, in the food area and he will be doing fire and feast. This is pretty much a live cooking event that we'll be sampling through all our VIP guests. That sounds like it's gonna be so much fun. Jorge, is there gonna be entertainment for guests? Absolutely, live music from 6 to 9 p.m. all night long. And Jorge, where can people get tickets? They can get tickets at Ticketmaster.com. It's just $75, unlimited sampling for everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jorge. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Carla. Guys, make sure you make it out to Taste McAllen, May 3rd. Okay, guys, and here's a list of events going on across the valley. Today is the last day of the South Texas Comic Con happening at the Convention Center. Exhibit Hall, Vendors Market, Artist Alley, and so much more. Visit SouthTexasComicCon.com for more information and tickets. And the Gladys Porter Zoo is hosting their annual brew at the zoo on May 13th. Live music, craft beer, and food tasting. Get your tickets now before they sell out at visitbtx.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us this weekend. If you're looking for Mother's Day gift ideas, you're not going to want to miss next week. Plus, we're celebrating Fitness Day. Until then, guys, I hope you have a great week. <laughs>